I can do this. Oh, yeah, okay. Great. Uh, so while we are, um, you know, waiting for everyone to join, we just finished the last session with Bunny. Um, so yeah, maybe we can start by introducing yourself, guys. So, uh, Bunny, do you wanna start? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, thanks. Uh, for having me here. It's awesome. Um, uh, exciting to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Michael. On the internet, I'm mostly called Bumi. <laughs> uh, I, um, I'm a software engineer. I work on Albi, uh, where I actually wrote one of the first lines of the Albi browser extension. Um, so I'm pretty excited about um, everything around um, yeah, Bitcoin and the possibilities that we have with the Lightning Network, uh, what to do with that on the web to transact globally. Uh, integrate payments into every application and these kind of things. Um, I'm mostly based in Germany right now. So this is where I'm calling in here. Um, yeah, so that's about me. Did you know in Bahasa Indonesia, Bumi means, means earth? Uh, in Indonesia, I learned that, yes. I oh, didn't know okay. that for a long time, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was, there was so initially a time where... Uh, some people were attacking me on Twitter because I have the Twitter handle at Boomi. Yes. And I was like, hmm, I don't understand this. What is this? And uh, when I was vis visiting Indonesia, somebody told me like, uh, yeah, here, this is this is the place where this, act this word actually has a meaning. <laughs> and I'm happy Earth is a nice. It's okay. I can deal with that. So. <laughs> okay. I, I, I thought like, you know, you've probably been in Indonesia or you have like some reason why you choose that name. But yes, it's very, very cool name. It's a it's a nickname. It's like Michael Boom and Boomy. That's kind of the uh, nickname where it came from, where people and the internet called me. <laughs> All right, and uh, Roland, yes, maybe you can introduce yourself too. Oh, uh, yeah. So I work as a software develop developer at Albi as well. Um, I've been working since the start of this year. Um, and the way I got into Albi actually is uh, last year in the first bulk fund. Uh, Legends of Lightning Hackathon. I met Rene and teamed up with him and one other team member, uh, and we created a project called Lightsats, which actually ended up winning the the hackathon. So um, then on, I've been uh, yeah living living Bitcoin, living Lightning, uh, really enjoying it. So I'm really happy to help uh, new developers get into Lightning and see all the cool things that they can do. Okay, while we are waiting also more people to join, uh, maybe Roland, you can tell us a, a bit your experience joining Hackathon because I think a lot of people here who, who just join, like they this is their first time probably joining the Hackathon and, and, and mostly the first time joining a Lightning Hackathon in Indonesia. So, so yeah, tell us more about your experience. I, I think it's a really awesome way to meet uh, like-minded people with uh, different skills. So when I joined up with Renee and Juan, uh, we were two programmers, but uh, slightly different skills. Renee did a lot more UI design. I, I did a bit more of the backend work and Juan covered everything, marketing, you know, public relations, uh, all the updates for us. And just together we had, we had awesome, you know, planning calls and uh, discussing features, what we should work on, uh, feedback from the community. And I think, and just running up to the the finals, we actually tipped over uh, 200,000, uh, sorry, no, just 2,000. Uh, we sent out 2,000 tips. Um, so I think at least a few people got, you know, orange build using light sets. Um, and I think no matter what skills you have, uh, you don't have to be a programmer, you can be an artist or you can do write content or, you know, be into advertising, anything. It doesn't matter as long as you're willing to work and uh, try and make the world a better place. Um, there's something for you. So, um, yeah, really hope you guys enjoy this hackathon, uh, both Indonesian hackathon and continue on after and go for the big uh, one Bitcoin prize. Amazing, amazing. All right, so uh, without further ado, um, I think I'm going to give the floor to you guys. Uh, today we are going to talk about the introduction about WebLN. 
So maybe everyone here like, what is WebLN? So yeah, please go ahead, uh, Michael and Roland, uh, the floor is yours. Cool. Um, I'll just share my screen. Um, can you guys uh, see the slideshow? Yes. Cool. By the way, one thing about hackathons, Albi itself actually also started as a hackathon. Often something that is uh, Amazing. Not mentioned and known. So yeah, that was um, yeah always nice to get input in these events, uh, as Roland said. And yes, I'll be the um, initial the browser extension that we're going to talk about also partly here. Um, yeah, started as a hackathon project a few years a few years back. So uh, yeah, always exciting to see what comes out of uh, the, such kind of events. Cool. Okay, so we already introduced ourselves, but uh, our emails are down here. Uh, definitely, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email email, email us. And uh, we also have a few other content links at the contact links at the end of the presentation. Uh, so first things first, uh, before we get into any code or any uh, theory stuff, we'd like to show you a demo of uh, what's possible. So. We're going to use a tool called Replit. Uh, so Replit is like a cloud-based development environment. Um, you can write code in there. You can share your code. Other people can run your application. Uh, you can get started for free. Uh, Boomi, is there anything, uh, any other benefits of using Replit that you can think of? Um, it's it's a nice uh, way also to collaborate um, because you have like a, a cloud-based editor uh, combined with running the application itself, uh, which I think is fun uh, and useful. Uh, but at the same time, it's uh, you can um, invite people to collaboratively uh, work and look at code um, quite easily. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it has a strong community around it. So there are a lot of uh, templates that you can build on. So if you want to start with a, you know, a basic React setup or a basic Golang setup or whatever language you want to use, uh, front end, back end, doesn't matter. There are a lot of uh, templates uh, that are already there that you can build on top. And a lot of people are sharing um, their applications. Um, uh, where you can look into what others are building and get inspired uh, from their code. Um, I always think that's super nice because, uh, you know, in the spirit also of open source, this is where um, learning learning a lot and getting inspiration is uh, is great. Yeah. And the things that we do is also right now, right? So you kind of looked at one of the um, featured uh, games and, um, yeah, and took it from there, right? Yeah, so let's get started. This is one of the games that we found right on the Replit homepage. Um, and I'll just uh, just give it a go. Just play it. Um, yeah, so this is also nice because somebody um, last year made a game using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, built it in Replit or shared it at least in Replit here. Um, and um, yeah. People can look at it. People can um, can use it. You can directly run it from here, as you see. And what we do is now also like take it and um, see if we can modify it and um, add some lightning functionality in in there. And I think that's the nice thing also about uh, about about Replit that you can just like um, yeah, just take it and build on um, other people's work. Yeah. So. Um, I don't really know very well how to play this game, but basically if you make a mistake, <laughs> uh, you can like fall off the screen and die um, or push peppers in the wrong direction and, and you uh, you can actually undo. So you can push Z and you'll go back and you can actually undo all your actions um, if you want. But uh, we kind of think that's, that's cheating, right? And uh, people who cheat should be should have to pay so uh we want to add a lightning payment so whenever you make a mistake just like i did just then i made my snake uh, fall off the edge um rather than undoing for free as many times as you want actually you have to pay so um i already started 
Uh, I can't see it yet. Um, I already started one. If I just, I'll just finish the first level. So it makes makes a bit more sense. It's hard to lose on the first level. Um, so so the the idea is that when you when you eat a chili, you have to you have to push it into the wall to eat the chili. And when you do so, your snake will turn into a rocket. And if it goes off the edge, then you die. Uh, so this time, if I push undo, I am actually prompted to pay. And if I if I cancel the payment, then I can't undo. Um, so I can cancel now and I'm just stuck where I was before. So I can try undo again. This time I can pay. And this time I manage to undo. So that's what uh, we're gonna do in a code session later on. But before we get into that, we'd like to show you a bit of details of uh, how, how it actually works behind the scenes. So, First, we'd like to uh, talk a bit about, about the Albi extension. Uh, so you you saw just briefly, that is actually what I use to um, make the payments when I when I tried to undo my um, my action. And what that what the Albi extension does is it actually sits between the web app, like the game that we have, and the user itself. And with the Albi app, you can have a single wallet uh, to make lightning payments, and you can use the single wallet throughout a whole different bunch of Bitcoin apps or Nostra apps, um, make payments to uh, a lot of different merchants or different or, uh, different types of lightning wallets. It's all interoperable. Uh, Bumi, would you like to add anything on this page? Mm. No, exactly. That that's that's about it. Uh, the what what the um, IB browser extension is doing. It's basically teaching the um, uh, the browser, uh, Chrome, Firefox, and so on, um, to interact with the Lightning network. That you directly have a Lightning wallet within your browser. You don't need to go to another application, another desktop application, open your phone, and so on. You directly have that um, in the browser wherever. You, uh, whatever you're doing on the web there um, and with that um, the user experience becomes um, much better um, much more seamless uh, so this is the exciting part and with a more seamless user experience you can do um, great different kinds of applications so different kinds of applications that integrate um, payments for example to integrate authentications in a much smoother way like as we do with uh, with our game that um, uh, later on that uh, just one action and you pay directly with one button and that's it so it wouldn't be possible if you would need to do that with a credit card or any other payment method because that's what the user experience would just be too um yeah too too hard yeah great okay so lb this isn't actually some like proprietary thing you can't just use the LB app, uh, it's not like a closed source thing. Uh, LB actually implements the WebLM standard. And what this is, is a protocol for a website to interact with a Lightning wallet. And that means you can use any any wallet app that imp implements this protocol. And also the website itself only has to implement one protocol in order to interact with any different type of Lightning wallet, no matter which node type you use, no matter which uh, Lightning wallet you use, it's all just a single protocol with simple commands such as send payment or creating invoices. Um, LB is just one of the options you can use. You can also use Breeze on your phone or the Blixt app. And there's uh, quite a few other options actually and more coming every day. So um, it's quite awesome to see new adoption of the WebLM protocol. And we'll explain a bit uh, in simpler details, how it works uh, after this. Yeah, so that that's the awesome thing, right? That it's this open standard. This is very different to what we have seen uh, before with other payment methods, where you would, for example, if you want to integrate PayPal payments, then you have to integrate PayPal. If you want to integrate um, 
um, card payments and you need to integrate something else. They're all different and you all have to inter, um, in integrate these kind of diff the different different methods in different ways. And here it's just uh, interoperability is, is the important thing. So um, the application doesn't care what kind of wallet the user has because it just talks um, uh, using the open standard. Yeah, and one additional thing that's quite cool is this WebLN provider can also set up uh, permissions or budgets in order to uh, limit how much access a website can have to your wallet. So, for example, if on your wallet you had 100,000 sets and you want to play this game, but you want to make sure that you only spend 100 sets, uh, that's completely possible using Alvi. So uh, there's another way we can explain WebLN. Uh, Bumi, would you like to uh, go through this one? Yeah. Um, so the basic concept of a web application that you all might know is like you have, uh, you might have a backend um, that serves um, the application, potentially dynamically loads something from a database, renders it in HTML and in front-end technologies, HTML, JavaScript, and so on, passes it on to the browser. Um, where the user accesses it and interacts with the application. So this is the typical setup that we have right now, right? So the uh, user just enter, opens the browsers, enters the URL, a HTTP request is made to the backend, the backend serves the, um, serves the application and the user views it and interacts it with there. And if a click, link is clicked, the same thing happens. Um, happens again, or potentially some dynamic stuff is happening with, with JavaScript. So this is the basic concept um, that, that we all know. So now with WebLN, um, we have um, um, a bit of addition to that. Um, you have the same setup, you use the same technologies, but now as the browser can interact with the Lightning Network, um, um, the application can, through WebLN, talk to the uh, to the user's wallet. So the user um, comes with a wallet to the application, to the website, and the website then can interact with that wallet, for example, to request a payment, to request the user to make a payment. Um, so this is the standardized interface uh, that um, the application is using to talk to the wallet through, through WebLN. Um, and then this wallet is interacting with the Lightning Network. So this is not going through the backend, uh, through your backend, but it's basically going directly from the user's wallet to the, light, to the, to the Lightning Network. So I think this is an important uh, concept to understand um, um, that the application through JavaScript, through WebLN is talking to the user's wallet. The rest is exactly the same, but this is kind of an addition to that. If you want to compare it a bit, you could say, it's like accessing um, the user's camera. So if you open um, a video conferencing app in the browser, then the application will also ask, uh, will also call, uh, will also do a JavaScript call, and the browser will ask, "Do you want to allow this application to access your camera?" Um, and this is kind of similar to what we have here. And here, the application is not accessing the camera, but it's accessing the user's wallet that the user brings with the browser to the application. And there's some benefits of this, right? Because if you consider uh, the legacy fiat system, actually, the backend would have control of accessing your credit card. That's one option. Or uh, you might have a lot of different applications, like uh, you can think of maybe your phone plan. You have a separate uh, number of credits on your phone plan that you have to top up and you have to manage all these different wallets. But here, you only have one balance, one wallet, which is your LB wallet, and you can use it through all these different websites. Very important, actually. Yes, totally. Um, it makes it also so much easier for the developer to interact with 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 that setup, then um, if the backend would need to do a pull payment through interacting with something like PayPal or something like of the other payment service providers, you have it's much much more um, complicated. Also in terms of um, also in terms of security, right? And this is yeah. a bit more to what you would typically see in a, in a normal physical shop, right? There you 
the you get an invoice from um, the cashier and you as a customer you give the the shop uh, the money so it's not that uh, um, in the background something is automatic you give it the information you give it your your access to your wallet and it, it pulls the money automatically so it's uh, um, yeah it's 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 much sim simpler to implement cool so uh, we'd like to show you the quickly show you some of the documentation around webland.guide we have um, a whole bunch of information on how to start the uh, best practices regarding UI but just for today we would like to go over some uh, simple the most important methods that you need. Um, so for the first one is webln.enable. And you, you need to, as a web application that wants to use lightning functionality, you have to call enable because you have to ask the user if they actually want to spend uh, sets on your site or if, they, if, if the user actually wants to let your site access their lightning wallet. So you call the simple function and we will get um, a pop-up. So maybe I can just try it right now in the console. So if you have the LB extension installed, it will inject window.webln into the browser, into the window object. Um, and any any provider, not just LB, but Breeze, uh, they, they all work on the similar principle where they enable a WebLN interface that websites or applications can use. So in the console right now, you can see that it's not enabled, right? So right now, WebLN.guide, the site has no access to my LB wallet. So I can just go enable. Um, and I'll just await it because it's an asynchronous function. Um, and it gives me the option, right? So I can cancel. If I click cancel, then the site can no longer try to use any lightning uh, functionality from my LB wallet. Uh, LB won't show up anymore, show any more pop-ups, uh, and that way the user has full control over um, what happens with their wallet. But in this case, I, I will connect because um, I trust webln.guide and that's fine. Cool. So. Uh, now we can go to the next one, which is get info. And this actually can return some info about your Lightning Wallet. And if, uh, sorry, if you use, um, if you use your own nodes, especially it's quite quite cool because it can return all this information about your alias, your, your the pub key of your node. Uh, and then a website could even use that to set up new channels with different nodes. Um, so this time I do get info. Um, we can see here it returns some information about my LB wallet, what it supports, what, which methods I can use. Um, and now we can actually make uh, do some methods, uh, call, call these methods uh, to interact with the Lightning wallet. So, um, the next one that's probably the most useful is actually sending payments. That's probably what I, what you want want to do most of the time on a website. So uh, if I just receive, um, I can create an invoice for one set. I'll just copy that. Um, and then I can do window.send payment. Um, and I'll just paste in the invoice. Um, and then the user will be prompted again. Um, and the cool thing here is, uh, as we said, you can set uh, permissions on how much um, you want to enable this website to use. And then the UX even improves further because you don't even have to see these pop-ups. You can just instantly pay. So I'll set a budget of a thousand sets. Um, now, if I'll just go ahead and create a second invoice. This time for two sets. Um, and I'll replace the last invoice with this new one. And you'll see I instantly paid. Um, there was no pop up. It's using the budget that I set up. 
And the last one, make invoice. Uh, as you see, I actually used the LV extension UI to create an invoice before, but I think I can do that programmatically, right? So this time I do make invoice and do I need to pass some arguments in the amount probably 100. And Albie will ask if I actually want to create an invoice. Um, but I'm fine with that because that means I can receive some money. So I'll create this invoice here. Um, and then I think I can I can pay myself. Uh, so this is good for testing. If you're if you're developing an app, you don't need to, even though you're using real lightning sets, uh, you can send them to yourself and that way you don't actually lose any money, but you can test uh, WebLN and lightning payments. Um, and again, my budget was set up, so I immediately paid and got a pre-image, which is like the proof of that I actually made the payment. Um, so someone who makes a payment on a site, if they get a premium image back, they can use that as proof and say, hey, I, I really did make this payment. Cool, so um, I think that's all we'll cover for now. There is just, there's quite a few additional methods. Um, I recommend you to have a look through this and depending on what, what sort of app you need, uh, you might need to use one or more of these methods. Um, so as I mentioned before, as long as you have a WebLN extension, it injects WebLN into the browser. Uh, so you don't actually need to download any developer package. All you need is an extension, uh, but you can use this JavaScript library, which will add uh, nice typings, uh, make it convenient for you as a developer to um, more easily do your implementation. Uh, Bumi, would you like to add anything there? Nope, that's that's exactly it. Um, yeah, it's you can use the WebLN object just as any other native JavaScript uh, function. You should check. You should check um, if it's available um, because it's not a default web standard just yet. <laughs> Um, but then you can just use it uh, as any native uh, JavaScript function in, in the application. Cool. But do we have, is, is there any question potentially? I don't know if you can paste it in the chat or something like that. If, if, there, is, if there is a question, um, I will keep an eye on that. Uh, please, uh, please just, uh, yeah, shout out, put it in there or yeah. Okay, so we just talked about WebLN, right? Which is an open protocol. Oh, is there a chat here? Um, there is a chat and there was the question, if there is a lightning test net, we can test this or we have to use real sets. Um, so um, yes, there is a test net. Um, it, it's a bit, like um there is a test net so as as with bitcoin there is the main network and there is a test net network and i think there are like one or two main um test net networks that you uh can use the tricky thing there in the lightning part is that you um still have to have a, a lightning node and channels open and not all applications um, are um, able to connect to the Lightning testnet network. So yes, there is one. Uh, we can share some links where you can find find that out. Um, um, but sometimes it's a bit tricky because an application might be connected to the mainnet and you are connected to the testnet, then it's not working and so on. So honestly, sometimes I uh, use uh, just mainnet and send low amount of Satoshis. Um, as Roland did uh, in the demo, he just sent one set uh, to himself or you have two accounts, two uh, applications and you send like one or two or 10 sets uh, between each other. So you're not really um, losing losing much. Um, so, so it depends. What you also can do is there is a nice application called Polar. 
um, which allows you to set up your own local network on your computer. Uh, there you have a graphical interface where you can say, I want to have like two Bitcoin nodes and I want to have two lightning nodes and they should have a channel with each other. And then you can connect to the different, to these different nodes, your application, and then you can use that one. So that's completely um, contained on your computer. Um, but it's, you, you have to learn a little bit about how to, how to set these things up. Yeah, so definitely for beginners, uh, just send sets to yourself or low amounts is fine. Um, and if you're sending sets to yourself, you don't pay any fees um, through your LB account. So uh, not really any need to worry. Um, so we talked uh, about one open protocol with LN, uh, but there's another protocol. So if you remember each time when I wanted to create an invoice, or send a payment, I have to pay an invoice, right? And invoices on the Lightning Network can only be used once. Um, and it, say I want to pay Boomi, right? And I want to pay him once a day or once a week. Uh, every time I have to request an invoice from Boomi. Uh, and this is, this is not very user-friendly. I would rather just, I know who Boomi is, can't I just pay him? Um, and this is what partially what LN URL solves. Um, it's basically lightning over URL. So basic HTTP requests to use lightning functionality. Uh, Bumi, do you have any additions there? Exactly, that's it. No, that's the, it's, uh, the nice thing is also it's just using HTTP. So you do HTTP requests to um, perform certain actions, um, as you said, like like getting the, getting the invoice. Um, yeah. So it's a bit of a higher level. So you have the Lightning Network, you have the Lightning invoices, the Bode Eleven invoice here, for as as the spec says, and this is a bit of a level on top of that that um, does some useful functionality that are not directly baked into the Lightning protocol itself. Yeah, and so here's an example. Um, this QR code that you see for me to receive sets, it's not actually a Lightning invoice. So I can create one here manually. I can specify an exact amount of sets and that can be paid once. But if you pay to my Lightning address, this is a static address. And what actually happens behind the scenes is when we do a request to the Lightning address, uh, we can generate an invoice. Um, and then we can pay multiple invoices to the same person. So we'll go into how that works uh, in the next few slides. So the best thing about uh, these lightning addresses, right, is they're so easy to share. Um, here's my one, quite short, human readable. Uh, give it to your friends or save it in your address book. You know exactly who to pay. And basically every Lightning wallet supports a uh, Lightning address, um, except for some self-custodial ones. And that is uh, quite a complicated topic, but it's quite a, quite good uh, to research and figure out why, why they don't actually support Lightning addresses. Um, I don't think I can explain it simply. Boomi, if, uh, what do you think there? I mean, ultimately, you can also run, um, um, put a Lightning address on your own domain. As it's using HTTP, the tricky part is that you will need to have an HTTP server somewhere. Either you run that on your own, on your own domain, or you use um, one of the service providers. And like, for example, albi at albi.com here, this Lightning address is doing that for, for you. So if you have like your node running at home on a Raspberry Pi or something like that, uh, then it might be tricky because you do not have an um, like a public IP address or a public domain that is reachable to do this HTTP uh, to resolve this HTTP request. Um, um, I think we shouldn't get too deep into it. I think the important thing is to understand that you have an HTTP level there. You for that you need an HTTP server that is accessible for other people who want want you, want to pay you. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so now we can go uh, for a demo on how this actually works. 
Um, how, how do you actually pay a lightning address? How does it generate an invoice? How do you pay that invoice? Um, so this is a standard so that all these different wallets, no matter if you use Albi, Wallet of Satoshi, Breeze, uh, you name it, um, basically every wallet can that can pay to a Lightning address because it's just a simple HTTP request. So uh, if we start here, um, can I move? I don't think I can move this. Um, if we go to check the my my lightning address how it actually works uh any lightning address server will have this well-known endpoint and this is uh part of the lnurl spec um and the last field here in the address is my username so rollsnz at getalb.com um and what it does is it returns some information about how you can actually uh pay to me so it can show the the minimum number of sets you can send the maximum uh, whether or not you can provide a comment um, the url to actually generate an invoice um, my nostra pub key uh, the fields that you can provide when you're sending the payment um, and is there something one, one thing to add here, well, what's important is um, LNURL is using millisub. The smallest amount actually in Lightning or in some Lightning application that support it, they are using millisubs. So 1,000 millisubs is actually one Satoshi. Um, so that's why this is, a, this is a high number. This is a bit of a confusing part. So there you have to be careful um, because if you only try to send 100, that's kind of... 0.1 Satoshi, which sometimes is then not possible. So yeah, you have to be careful about the um, about the, uh, about the unit, basically. Yeah, okay. and the nice thing also to emphasize on that again, it's a it's all a standard, right? So you can put this on your own domain, and anything um, um, any any wallet will support it out of out of the box. There is nothing proprietary. It's just a specification how um, um, to call a how to do an HTTP request and what the chase what JSON should should, uh, should be returned. Yeah. So for example, if uh, I had a wallet of Satoshi address here, it would just be wallet of Satoshi dot com and the, the endpoint on the side is the same, and maybe I have a different uh, Lightning address username here, so I might change my username, but everything works the same. So yeah. if you have I've... a Lightning address from whatever provider, try this out. It's always interesting to look below that, uh, below below the spec and what's what's actually returned, what's in, in the JSON. Yeah. Um, so now I can actually call this callback function. Um, and I can specify an amount and a comment. Uh, and this callback is actually going to generate the invoice, right? So if I just execute that, um, I get a response with the pay request, which is the invoice here. So that's a bold 11 invoice. Um, so if I just open up the LB, LB app, um, I can pay this invoice of one set click pay um, and that should have gone through. So if I go to my LB account, um, you can see I just received uh, one set. Yeah. And so also, with this HTTP request, we basically tell the recipient, please, we want to send you some Satoshis. We want to send you one Satoshi. Here is a comment. Please give me a new lightning invoice that I can pay for that. Cool, and there's also uh, something else Albi support, supports specifically right now as a way to verify whether or not this invoice has been paid, right? So uh, it gives this unique URL, which I can open, um, and it will see the status settled true. Um, the pre-image, um, which again is the receipt of the payment and the pay request again. So if I just go 
I can just create another invoice. As you see, I called the same callback, same URL with the same parameters, but another unique invoice was generated. Um, so I can now go to this uh, verify URL again, and you'll see I haven't paid it yet, right? So the settled is false. It doesn't have a pre-image set yet. And um, here's the pay request. So if the person who was supposed to pay, maybe they um, they lost the pay request, I can send it to them again for them to pay, right? Um, cool. And this is a default flow that you actually have in a lot of applications. You will see if you are now in a bit in, in the code. Um, you, as an application, want need to get an invoice, somebody needs to pay it, and the payment needs to be verified. And this is the standard uh, to do that um, in a, on a universal standardized way. Cool. Uh, so outside of LNURL pay, uh, the LNURL specification actually has another few features, uh, which are really cool. Uh, one of them is actually being able to withdraw money from the website itself. So normally uh, you think of users who they're going to pay for some product, uh, pay, pay for some service on the website. Well, now it's the opposite. The website can actually pay the user if the user maybe does something useful. Maybe they post a, uh, a nice uh, article that people like and people send the website money. The website can then send it back to the user who wrote the article. And that's done through creating a voucher, the same LNURL code or a QR code that the user can scan with their wallet and then withdraw the money rather than sending it. Uh, and what this really enables is a way to earn money on the web for normal people. Uh, and that's one thing at Albi, we think that value for value, the model of creating something that's useful for people and then people paying for it not because they have to, uh, but because they think it's valuable. Um, we think that's the most sustainable uh, monetization model. Um, and I'll just take you through a quick example. Stack and use if you guys haven't seen it yet. Um, it's basically like the Hacker News website where uh, people can post um, interesting news or things that happen, links. Um, and they can be upvoted, but here instead you upvote by paying sets. So you can see here I have 12,000 sets. Um, and let's see the first uh, item here, decentralized web hosting solution on Nostra. I think that's pretty cool, right? So I'm going to send them a thousand sets. Zap. And these go to this user. So I can also receive uh, sets. So I think yesterday I posted something, right? And see here, I stacked 1,000 sets and re rewards and that increased my balance on the site. So what I can do here is uh, I can actually withdraw these sets to my Albi account. So before I mentioned that you can take your Albi account anywhere, and you can just manage one wallet. But here, actually, on Stack and News, Stack and News hosts its own wallet, and there's there are some UX benefits of that. Um, but actually, they are trying to move to a way where you can just pay pay and receive sets with your own wallet. But it's actually quite uh, difficult to receive sets all the time. For example, if you don't have a Lightning address or you're you know you're you're not online. It's easy for Stacker News to temporarily hold these funds, and then when you come to the site, you can withdraw them. So I'm just going to go ahead, um, and it's quite cool. Stacker News has a WebLN integration, right? So it just launched uh, the LB modal, and I can say I want to withdraw five thousand sets. I still want to have a balance so that I can you know uh, interact and uh, upvote. Uh, send sets to people from content that I like. So um, I'll go ahead and confirm this. You can see my balance updated. And 
in the incoming. I just received 5,000 sets from Stacker News. Cool. Um, would you like to add anything there, Bumi? Nope, that's perfect. Are there any questions? Please just paste it in. Um, yeah, but so these are the two different, two default um, flows, either the user pays the website, the application, or the website pays, uh, yeah, pays the user. <laughs> Cool, and now we have um, a link to Polar as well. So yeah, I definitely recommend um, give that a go if you're if you're a bit further along on your lightning journey. Yeah. If you're if you're just starting out, then I'd just stick to stick to the basics. But if you want to learn how it works a bit uh, in more detail, uh, try it out. Definitely um, for the for the deeper, and you're like close to the protocol. You need to have this Polar again. So yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. This, as I said, LNURL is an open specification and there's a whole b bunch of specs that cover different parts like LNURL withdraw, uh, lightning addresses, that's number 16. Um, making payments, I think that's number six, right? So um, if you're interested in how any of these work, um, just visit the, the spec on GitHub. Um, and everything we did today was all done manually, right? But if you're building an application and you just want to, you know, generate invoices, pay to a lightning address, uh, we've created an NPM package. It's really easy to use, um, you know, create invoices, verify payments, uh, even do zaps on Nostra or podcasting 2.0 payments, um, and even pay to lightning-based paywalls uh, to see content behind a paywall. So uh, I would recommend you try out this package uh, rather than trying to implement things uh, completely from scratch or do your own HTTP request to LNURL. Uh, our package is already for you to use and it's all open source. So uh, if you see something missing, definitely uh, create an issue or feel free to contribute as well. So uh, now if we go back we can uh, go back to the snake game, right? Um, and we can show you how to add lightning payments there. So let's see. Um, I, I fault uh, Spicy, that's the name of the site. So name of the app. So in Replit, uh, if you find an app you like, um, you can just click fork and that will make your own copy that you can edit. Um, and what I did is actually, it's quite interesting because normally uh, the apps people share on Replit are completely open source and they're already going quite editable. But this one I found, they actually uh, pre-compiled everything, minified their code and made it really hard for people to edit. So um I kind of found like a hacker here. I was searching through the code and I found the undo method, which is what is uh, called when you press uh, the Z button when you you made a mistake and you want to go back. So we're going to make a few minor changes to uh, add some lightning functionality. So um, that when you press undo, you have to make a payment before um, the undo functionality will execute. And if you don't pay, if you ignore the payment, then nothing happens. You can't um, undo. All you can do is restart. Um, and actually, it would be quite cool. What we could do, right, is make the user start right back at level one, and they have to go through the whole flow again. So that could be quite a good way to, like, you know, incentivize people to actually pay. Um, but this is just an example. So I think... One quite cool thing to uh, be proud of, right, is just with two two lines of code, uh, we can um, request a payment. Uh, so just adding two lines of code to this existing app, and now when you press undo, you have to make a payment. So the first one is, as I said before, you have to request the user, the application. So this spicy snake game, it has to request um 
access to the Lightning functionality of the user's wallet. And it does that using webln.enable and the user can accept or uh, decline. So if they decline, then obviously the undo functionality is not gonna work because this function will throw an exception uh, if if it fails. And if it throws an exception, then none of, none of this code further down is actually gonna run. So I don't actually know how it works. It's all minified here, but uh, it will do some stuff with the snake and undo the, the behavior. So um, I think I showed it before, but we'll just quickly go again. Um, so one set, um, all right, I can, so there's a problem here right now. Um, I can enter how many sets I wanna pay, which uh, probably doesn't make sense, right? Um, but I'll pay 10 sets. So we can go, I think I pressed uh, undo a couple of times. So it popped up twice, um, but we can, we can make some updates to this code instead. But uh, first, I think we need to explain what this line does, right? So we use the LN URL specification, just like we discussed before, and you can pass a lightning address in here. So this, this LN URL function from WebLN, it can accept lightning addresses, it can accept pay requests, withdraw requests, um, everything just using a single function. So it's quite useful. Um, but in this case, because we pass a lightning address, that means we are intending to pay to this lightning address. Um, but the problem, as I mentioned before, is that uh, we can't specify how much we want to pay. Uh, we don't have any control of how the invoice is generated um, and probably doesn't make so much sense on in this game. So there's a slightly more complicated example, but it give, gives us a uh, more customization, more control over what happens. Uh, Bumi, would you like to add anything from from your side? I will jump in, but that's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so I, I, I guess typically, though, this is the most simple thing that you could do. And I find, find it actually always super amazing that with just like two lines of code, any application, just with two lines of JavaScript code, you can integrate uh, payments and request um, a payment from a user. Um, so, yeah, so the most the most simple thing. So if it's a voluntary payment, for example, though this is the most simple thing that you can do, click a button, like add this as an event listener to a button and bam, that's it. So, but yeah, let's go to the bit more advanced one where we can customize uh, things a little bit more and where you as an application developer also choose the amount, uh, which would be the, the typical flow. Um, but maybe also here, um, because we are using open standards, um, the nice thing is we again here just use the lightning address and the lightning address is no it's not a sensitive data right so it's nothing it's not a secret it's not a password or something like that not a uh, something so it can easily be shared um and because it's a standard and program programmable you can use it here and uh, we could try this maybe somebody has a lightning address uh they want to share that we can uh, uh use that one here that you should get some sats <laughs> when roland is playing and not roland <laughs> <laughs> get some sets when he is playing. I think a lot of people likes to have uh, some free sets. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a lightning address or somebody has one, uh, share it in the chat. Otherwise, uh, we, uh, yeah, we. There. Otherwise, Roland, well, you get your sets. <laughs> <laughs> So anyone wants to post yeah. their lightning address, guys? Here. Yeah. We'll, I'll, 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 oh. Sorry. Can you can you mute yourself? Great. Uh, so we got a we got a lightning address now. Um, thanks for that. I'm gonna bump up the sets this time. So, um, let's say five thousand. Um. And now I won't pay myself. I will pay to Kitchen Quail 33. 
Um, so I can just save that. And now we're gonna we're gonna see a slight difference here. So uh, before we didn't specify an amount, uh, we had no control of how the invoice was created. This time we do, and this time we're using uh, the Lightning Tools package, which I mentioned before. Um, so I think um, there's a there's a link in the slides. Um, you can check it out. But what's what it what it's doing is it's doing the the request to this Lightning address, just like we did before, to see how many sets we can pay, um, and a callback function that will actually be used to generate the invoices, right? And then on this next line, we're gonna we're gonna be doing a request to that callback function. We're gonna be passing five thousand sets or five hundred thousand millisets um, to the callback, and we'll get an invoice back, and then I can send the payment. So I think I've saved it now, and I'll just re refresh the page here. So I'm going to intentionally make a mistake and I lost, right? So now I want to undo. I press D and we get an invoice, right? 5,000 sets um, and I'm going to pay it. And you see my undo succeeded. Um, and let us know in the chat if you got the 5,000 sets um, so I can do it again. And this time I'm... I'm going to press C again. I, I didn't see the budget, so it's going to ask me again. This time I'm going to say, no, I don't want to pay uh, 5,000 sets. So cancel. Um, and I'm still stuck here. So, um, yeah, can you let us know in the chat? Did, uh, yep. Yeah, cool. You got yep. the 5,000 sets. Yep. Great. So, uh, cool. Let's go back to the code demo. Um, I think that's everything uh, Everything so far. So it's still really easy, right? And I think this is why people say uh, magical internet money, right? So um, pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Exactly. That's a nice thing. And you also see the beauty of the open standard because like now, um, yeah, with that, you can just you use the lightning address actually of somebody else of the recipient and your application here is orchestrating the payment getting the invoice from this recipient passing it on to the player uh, requesting the payment um so uh, just there's a bit of uh, javascript code cool. so that's the end uh thanks very much and thanks for me as well for um you know uh, filling out all the gaps that I missed. So, uh, oh, we got a raise hand here. Um, yep, please, please. Uh, uh, actually, me, but uh, I I want to ask from you, like, um, will there be any any tips for uh people who just started to uh you know building a lightning app? Like, maybe you can give like three things that you think is most important for them to know. Okay, uh, one, install Albi. I think it's the easiest way to get started with, uh, you know, implementing, you know, having access to WebLN and developing websites, which can use WebLN, uh, definitely the easiest way to get started. Um, two, uh, all the building blocks are available. So uh, we've created packages for you. Uh, Window.webln exists. Uh, everything is available. So um, you don't need to build much from scratch, only whatever you want to make special about your specific app that you're going to submit to the hackathon. So you can focus on the cool idea that you have and the lightning functionality should be ready to go. Um, Bumi, do you have, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. Um, one thing that I always like, I would add two things. One thing is always like, um, 
building an app that you envision that you already have and then try to add lightning there so on a specific use case work on a specific use case that you like to solve this lightning um so that always helps me um also to be excited and see okay how can i use it in that sorry specific case for me and the second thing is um try to like come from a higher level and then dig down um, I think uh, a lot of mistakes, especially if you're new, uh, that are made in Bitcoin is like you want to understand the deepest protocol thing of the Bitcoin core network and the Lightning network and so on and the channels and what are the HTLCs and back and forth. So there's a lot of complexity in, um, definitely in there. But I think you do not need to uh, go down there. You should come from the top, from the use case, what you want to solve as we did here with adding a payment to this game um, and then see, okay, what is LNUL there actually? Look at the JSON. So what is in there? And then go down from there. What is this callback doing? What is in this bold 11 invoice in this payment request? What is this invoice actually there? And go down from, from, from there a little bit if you want, and then you can go down as much as you want. So I personally actually pr typically prefer also to stay a little bit more on the user side and not on the deep protocol side um, um, because I want to use this um, these tools to build something useful for people. Um, but that's where you can go down as deep as um, as, you, um, as you want. But I, in my point of view, should come from, from your use case and then uh, dig deeper into these protocols as we talked here, like Webpl and LNUL, and then you can go down to whatever you want. Yeah, and if, yeah, sorry, just one more. If, if you have any questions, the best uh, place is to join our uh, Telegram, get our, get our be Telegram uh, group. We have a specific channel for devs and builders. Uh, you can ask anything lightning related and we, will answer at least once a day. So um, definitely, if you need any help, let us know. Yeah, I paste the link for the Telegram groups down there, and then we'll also put it in the resources. Thank you so much, Roland and Bumi. This is, you know, a lot of, a lot of to, to, to uh, absorb, but very, very important and uh, useful information that you guys are putting for us. Um, and thank you so much, Albi, for your hard work to provide the resources for everyone to, you know, start building for Lightning. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you around, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, stay tuned for part two tomorrow. Oh, yeah. right? Stay tuned for part two tomorrow. Oh, yeah, for yeah. everyone, sorry, for everyone, uh, we still have a session for tomorrow. So we're uh, going to have... Uh, what is it like about Noster and also the the SDK? Is that correct? Yeah, well, we'll actually uh, get you a bit further started on building your own app. So different uh, tools you can use around there. So um, if you found this one valuable, uh, definitely the next one is, is going to be more of the same stuff. So um, yes. more practical. If you also have questions, let us know. Then we can cover it tomorrow also, digging deeper into something. Looking forward to that. All right. Thank you so much, Bumi. Thank you so much, Roland. Have a great day, cool. and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. <laughs> Ciao.